So hello everybody and welcome to our lab in Heidelberg and to the demonstration of our brain scales hardware. Which you can see in my back, we have here the brain scales hybrid multiscale facility with the neuromorphic part in this grade and the standard PC cluster in this grade. And I will give you now a short tour over the neuromorphic part. I think this one is pretty obvious. So as a first introduction, I will show you one of our post-process prototype wafers, which we use to qualify the post-processing process. You can see the squared reticles, which are repeated all over the wafer. Each of these reticles contains eight Hiken circuits. And these column-like structures are the stripe connector patch, which we use for the power supplies and the high-speed uh, signal connectivity to the outside world. And the wafer scale neural network connectivity is established using these um, fine pitch connectivity on the reticle borders, which have a density of about 2,000 connections per two th uh, centimeters. And um, they allow us to communicate action potentials across the whole wafer and use the whole wafer as one neural network. The backside of this aluminum bracket that I just showed you it can be seen here. So the wafer is attached face to the back to this printed circuit board, squared like. The electrical connectivity is established with these um, stripe connector pads, as I said. This printed circuit board here um, has some infrastructure to switch off and on the power for each individual, each individual reticle. And furthermore, it establishes the high-speed connectivity to the digital network chips that we also developed in the BrainScales project, four of which are placed on these FPGA boards. So we have four DNCs, the digital network chips, and one FPGA on these boards. Eight boards on this side. And um, what you can see on this view is also these copper rails that are used for mechanical fixing on the one hand and also supply the main core power to the neuromorphic circuits. They are supposed to draw up to 600 ampere. That's the reason why these copper rails are rather massive. We will now have a look on the back side of this board. As you can see, there are four more of these FPGA boards. So we have 12 FPGA boards, 48 DNCs, and 48 reticles that we can use, which sums up to 400 of these Hiken circuits. Furthermore, on this backside is an auxiliary board for the power supplies and a breakout board where we can connect to all the analog signals that are coming from the wafer. So we have the possibility to monitor the voltages on selected membranes on, down on the wafer for monitoring purposes or just to see how the hardware is behaving. Connections to the outside world are established via Ethernet connections. These are standard Ethernet cables that are connected to the FPGA boards. These in turn are connected to a standard switch down here. And this switch is connected via 10 gigabit Ethernet links to the control PC cluster that I mentioned at the beginning. These control PCs are there to execute the low-level hardware access software, but also to perform mapping and routing of neural networks onto the hardware and potentially to simulate virtual environments. OK, so much for the hardware. We will now give you two short demonstrations of the working hardware. The first one will be illustrated using this small printout. So we communicate to the system via Ethernet to these FPGA boards. This is another one. It connects to these connectors on the printed circuit board, which in turn route the connections to the location of the reticle that we want to talk to through the elastomeric connectors down to the wafer. We will then talk to one single neuron on the target wafer. We enter the wafer with on these um, post-processing pads. Then at the correct point in time, a pulse will be generated on the on-wafer layer 1 network, which is then forwarded to a synapse line. We have a synapse connected to one neuron. It's a very strong synapse, which makes this neuron fire. So the action potential is digitized, sent onto the on-wafer network, and then 
over a reticle boundary with this fine pitch post processing to a neighboring Hiken. There to a synapse driver, another very strong synapse connected to a target neuron, which will fire upon the stimulus. The action potentials are digitized again and transported via the high speed connectivity back through the printed circuit board here, through the connectors to the FPGA board, and finally via Ethernet back to the host. So this setup is currently being configured by my colleague Alexander Kononov. What you can see here on the scope screen are the membrane voltages of the source neuron and of the target neuron. Currently they are at rest and um, we will now configure the stimulus to the source neuron first. As you can see, this is a rather non-biological setup. This is due to the hardware being not calibrated at the moment and the very strong characteristic of the synapse, which should make the neuron fire in every case. And we can now connect to the target neuron, which with a temporal delay of several hundreds of nanoseconds, sees the pulse of the source neuron and fires itself. These are several spikes that are uh, caused by this one input. This is also due to the non-calibrated hardware. But the message that I want to bring to you is that the source pulse is being transported over the, wafers, over the wafer, over our post-processing lines to a target neuron, which in turn also fires. Calibration is another story. <laughs> Okay, so this was a very simple setup, um, but also for this, even for this simple setup, we need a very detailed knowledge of the hardware. We are using the low level test routines that we are using to test the hardware to set this up at the moment. And as you might know, during the facets project, there has been developed um, a common application programming interface for neural simulators called Pine. With Pine, you can configure Neuron or Nest, for example, and also the brain scales hardware. And the Pine interface is going quite well at the moment. We will show you a very simple demonstration now where we configure one single neuron using a Pine, Python script or a Pine script with a constant current stimulus. So this is the usage from the view of a neuroscientist that wants to use the hardware. He just imports a Python module called hardware.brainscales, as example. We can set a Python dictionary for the parameters of one neuron. This is uh, the setup call for all the hardware. And this is where we instantiate one sim single ad <coughs> adaptive exponential integrated and fire neuron with the dictionary that we defined before. We also instantiate a periodic current source as a stimulus to this neuron. And in this line, we connect the uh, current source to our ADEX neuron that we generated at this point. We also want to see the membrane of this very neuron, which is as easy as this line. We just say record, and the software already configures all the analog readout circuitry on the wafer scale system to output the membrane voltage of this neuron. My colleague Eric Müller will now start the demonstration. We need to readjust the oscill oscilloscope. Optimize the triggering. <laughs> Great. Okay, so what you can see is the membrane voltage is at rest at the beginning and we have this pulsed current source which makes the neuron fire. You can see it has an adaptive term so it reduces its rate and then the stimulus is turned off and this is repeated. So very simple demonstration, both of them. But um, the message I hope is clear. We wanted to show you that the BrainScale's hybrid multiscale facility is basically fully, operation, fully operational. We can use the high-speed communication over the FPGA boards. The elastomeric stripe connectors to the post-processed wafer are no problems. And we can have communication among the wafer over these fine-pitch post-processing lines.